Hello guys, welcome to our new YouTube channel. My name is Dina Taporskaya. The guy behind the lens is Sergei German, my husband. We've been sailing around the world, me for the last five years, him for like 12. And because we sail, we spend a lot of time, sometimes longer periods of time in different locations and some stories and some businesses in these locations are extremely interesting and super inspiring so we decided to start this channel it's gonna be a little bit wider and a little bit different than like business statistics but uh, the main goal is just to show the best examples from around the world what people do in their lives what is they build how they live and uh, to me this first episode which uh, we are having today is one of the dearest to my heart because it's about conservation center we are super happy to be here we are staying right now in this ponton which is part of the big property and to me this property is like paradise on earth and it's all man-made and uh, the man behind uh, to me he is legend uh, his name is Jaco his house and all the conservation center is behind uh, he's super famous to be the only one in the world breeder for a lot of species and we're gonna ask him today how this all big infrastructure works what are the main reasons he is doing it and just show us around this incredible incredible paradise place So guys, meet Jaco, it's the man behind this place, this amazing place which we're gonna talk about today. He is the owner and uh, the biologist, conser converse, conservationist and uh, bird breeder and uh, with other big collections of uh, animals. So tell us please, what is this, uh, what is this place? Okay, hi, thank you for the interview. It's a pleasure to be with you and participate in your, in your interview. Main project is our conservation pro project, which was a, started in 1992, uh, actually in the land where the marina is. Oh, really? Yes. So it's like this bay over yeah. there. And what happened is that I was away in a vacation, I was in uh, Indonesia, and um, for many years there's been very big Colombian wood boats coming to buy coconuts. One of these boats uh, got into very bad weather in, uh, in uh, 1992, and uh, they had to come to Isla Grande. Mm -hmm. They had one bad engine and they had to go there, which they normally don't mm -hmm. uh, anchor there. Since they anchored, the police went to check what was inside the boat. Okay. And they find out toma toma tomato cases with macaws, parrots and toucans in there. Oh, yeah. There were 98 birds and they were confiscated by the authorities at the time. Um, were they alive? Yeah, they were alive. Mm -hmm. They were contrabanding them mm -hmm. to Panama to, to sell them. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a black market of mm -hmm. uh, animals. Confiscated the birds and put them in my land. And they put me as the depository. Mm -hmm. That's uh, nice. Uh, did they ask you? No, they just did it. <laughs> I, I, I had no uh, clue. I called a friend in the United States that he was involved with conservation. I told him the case and he recommended me a lady, a veterinarian from the States, specialist in mm. uh, parrots. So I called this lady, I paid her ticket and she came with two ladies more that mm -hmm. worked with her 
and they built, you know, we bought some wire, you know, my office took care of that and um, got the food and uh, she started saving the birds. It's so, so good to have a person who knows. Yeah, yeah. and I wasn't even here to see mm -hmm. how it was done. So I came back after my vacation was finished and, um, you know, around 20 birds died. Mm -hmm. in so a, like 70 or something like Yes, yes. So the plan was to reintroduce all the species that are in Panama mm -hmm. that we could reintroduce to the wild. Um, we had to build a very big facility, uh, you know, uh, 15 meters long, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, five meters high, and uh, eight meters wide. It's and like the this top, huge cage. yeah, huge cage with a lot of places for them mm -hmm. to eat. And in the top of the cage, we could lift it. And mm. It was a big thing the day that we want to liberate them, open uh -huh. it. Okay. So um, we were able to liberate 48 macaws in this area. Nice. And those are the macaws that you see today flying and they have bread. The blue and golds, uh -huh. the red macaws and the green macaws. We see blue and yellow every evening. Yes. They're screaming with this. I recognize their voice and I, yeah. I want to ask, are they coming back? Uh, for this place to feed or to say hello uh, to friends or how No, it the story is uh, a little bit more uh, complicated. Um, uh, first, these birds had their wings clipped mm -hmm. and it takes them a year to molt the, mm -hmm. the, the feathers. Mm -hmm. So we had to wait for them to molt the feathers and to start feeding them um, mainly fruits, and uh, stuff that they will recognize here in mm -hmm. the in the wild, mm -hmm. not only the captive uh, uh -huh. food. Uh -huh. So we did that, and it was very successful. We decided to sex the birds to see how many males and females they were, mm -hmm. and we had we let go first the males mm -hmm. because the males will stay around if the females are oh. in the in the facility. So we had them flying around for a month, mm -hmm. and then we released the females. Mm -hmm. Then uh, left the cage open, mm -hmm. so if they wanted to come back and eat there, mm -hmm. they could. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a whole process. Um, the interesting thing is that there were no macaws flying around this national park. Mm -hmm. And now there are. <laughs> not, not at all, not even one. What happened? Uh, in Porto Velo was the capital of uh, the Spanish uh, government and all the gold that came from Peru mm -hmm. and all the silver came through the uh, crosses road okay. all the way to Porto Velo. And from Porto Velo, the, um, uh, the ships went to Spain. So they used to catch all the macaws, all the parrots and monkeys here. Mm -hmm and take them to Europe. Oh, yes, okay. so there was no uh, macaws here. Some parrots still, but no macaws. So this was the first reintroductions worldwide to maca of macaws. And uh, wow. it's even in, um, you can find the information because it was published by uh, Dr. Susan Club a, a year and a half later. Mm -hmm. And um, the birds have done well, they reproduce, and the reason you see sometimes more in an area and sometimes less is because parrots and macaws, they know which trees are producing food. Uh -huh. so, so they, they take different around. routes. Okay. Yeah. In December, they start nesting, mm -hmm. and normally they do it in uh, dead palm trees. Mm. So, um, you know, they move to other areas, and by March, April, you will see groups of 
forma cost flying together. That means it's the mom, the dad, and two babies. Normally they produce That's two babies. That's what we've seen like a year ago, yeah. maybe in December, maybe, because uh, in Isla Grande we saw the bigger amounts yeah. of them and they were s still screaming loud and uh, also there were a few people in the beach, but not uh, too crowded and they just choose one tree or another. And yeah, they like to sleep in the islands because there's no predators. Mm. No, you know. That's why they choose they, this They choose place. the islands because there's no uh, predators uh -huh. at night. So uh, who are the uh, predators which can harm? Okay, them? you can have um, uh, ocelots, mm -hmm. margays, mm -hmm. or felines, small felines that climb trees. Ah, okay. And uh, that's their main nocturnal predator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they sleep and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they do. So that was uh, the way this place started. And uh, we did a good job and the government doesn't have the funds, the money, the funds uh, authorized uh, to make a conservation center and rehabilitate animals. Mm -hmm. So they send them to three different places we are one. The mm -hmm. second one is the Summit Zoo that belongs to the government. Mm -hmm. What it is? It's a zoo called Summit. Oh, Summit. It's uh, be belongs to the municipality of Panama. It's in it's, Panama City? It's outside of Panama City, uh, half an hour. Mm -hmm. It's a big place, used to be, was made by uh, the Americans and it's a big botanical garden. Mm created more than a hundred years ago. Wow. And uh, then they started having uh, confiscated wildlife and uh, they have a, a simple zoo, nice, mm -hmm. I would say beautiful, that, uh, you know, they send the animals, but they get full. So I am mm. plan B. Okay. So okay. they send us here, not only birds, they send us uh, felines that are confiscated like uh, Baby jaguar, mm -hmm. uh, tapers. Uh, yes, I saw yes. this family. And the stripey one as a baby, That's right? That's a baby. The striped one is a baby. Yes. We just had uh, one born like a month ago. Oh, and uh, okay. another one six months ago. And we got a confiscated one that the parents will kill. The mother was killed in the Darien mm. uh, by hunters. And the baby was attacked by dogs and was recuperated. Oh. And... Um, we had to feed him six liters a day of goat milk, still drinking milk. But it's not many goats around here. No, you buy it. We buy bottles of uh, okay. goat milk. Not cheap, $11 a bottle. Yes, because it's yeah. not like cow's milk you go no, and no. buy every... And it uh, has 10 days of expiration, so we always have to be very alert with that. But mm -hmm. it's growing well, and now started to eat uh, yucca and oh. other vegetables and it's with another taper mm -hmm. a female that it's six months mm -hmm. so she's teach him how to behave oh nice yeah so uh, we receive birds and our project is to release them two years ago there was a confiscation in the darien of 150 uh, redhead uh, Amazons is called Amazona Autumali Salvini. So they all came without feathers, little, and we had to feed them oh. for a year, and then we gave it back to the government, mm -hmm. and the government released them. When? Our uh, they w went to Chiriqui, which is mm. in the yeah, yeah, border with from. Costa Rica, in a national park mm -hmm. that is very protected. Mm. What we is tell them when they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Some other animals, like margays and small felines that, um, that come as babies, uh, they become imprinted to humans mm -hmm. and uh, they need their mom to show them how to hunt. Because in different times of the year, you have different prey. You know, there's more iguanas yes. and in one month, there's more... Uh, Eggs they, of somebody. Uh, so if they don't have the mom to teach them and you release them to the jungle, they, they just will die. just get skinny and survive and don't, don't survive. 
So uh, with felines, it's a, a group of biologists working to see how they can reintroduce felines. Mm -hmm. Because the ones that we keep here, we breed them. Mm -hmm. We have babies, we're very successful breeding. And this is what another big part I feel, you know, uh, because sometimes some populations of animals just becoming extinct. Yes. And then if you have this genetic group, like yes. few of, uh, you know, not just the last two, but the more you yes. have, the diversity of uh, genetical parts of the... That's very important. And, and that was a very good question you just uh, mentioned. Uh, the genetics is very important, uh, like in, uh, from Argentina to Mexico, there's more than 11 subspecies of ocelots, mm -hmm. margays, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to reestablish an area, it has to be with the right subspecies, mm -hmm. okay? Because you don't want them to mix with other subspecies. Okay. So we have here very clean genetic pools. Mm -hmm. We don't mix subspecies. Mm -hmm. We're very um, um, uh, straight with that. Mm -hmm. Many birds could not be uh, released because they had a bad wing, a bad foot, mm -hmm. and if the bird is not in perfect conditions, will not make it in the wild. Mm -hmm. So we kept uh, around uh, 25, uh, birds here from that uh, confiscation mm -hmm. and they started reproducing mm -hmm. so we've released uh, you know uh, many more birds through the years which are local yes I can imagine and the ones that are not local uh, we kept them because we cannot uh, mm -hmm. uh, release them and they bred a breeding center for animals uh, that can be in the future released to their native countries mm -hmm. you know if yes. necessary yes, so yes. this is a long-term project that is gonna overcome me and uh, it's going to it should be like a big and global I mean the, the whole knowledge behind it is how to keep the animals, how yes. to make them happy, how to yes. make their habits, normal habits. It's complicated because uh, the problem is uh, deforestation. The deforestation in this area stopped in Panama is enforcing a lot of laws. So uh, defore deforestation mm -hmm. stops. So uh, to exist uh, legally, we need a zoo license. Today, the name, the name Sioux is not loved by many people because they think of exhibition of animals for profit. Mm -hmm. But uh, legally, to be able to, to work under international law, mm -hmm. we have to have a Sioux license. Mm -hmm. And we don't get money from governments or from anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to make this same, uh, uh, be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So what we do is some birds that parrots and macaws that we breed here, we send them to a couple of pet shops in Panama. Okay. Because if anybody in the world wants to buy a parrot, they go to a store yes. where they sell parrots. But in Panama, they go to the woods and they catch the parrots and they destroy the nest. Mm. 
and uh, for 10 parrots they bring, one survives. Terrible. Okay? So uh, by providing this store with parrots in Macaw, you create um, an environment that if somebody wants to buy one, they can get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do that, and the um, catching of parrots in the wild has been reduced a lot because people now are having more conscious, mm -hmm. of you course. know, and yeah, our parrots be. have a special ring mm -hmm. and they have a permit and uh, that helps us also to be sustainable. And also have this kind of support system if needed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I believe when you buy a parrot from a shop and you can have, can be put into contact with some good veterinary for the birds yes. if, in case yeah. you want to keep these birds uh, in cage and uh, live long and happy life. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not a cage lover, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to have uh, birds in cages, but... Uh, uh, or fair lines, we give them the right facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm I saw not your a, facility yes. constantly building. Like we yes. are one here, here around, yeah. and it's constant uh, building around. Yeah, here. we want to have them comfortable. We have uh, babies being born, and they need to be uh, separated. Yes, new house. <laughs> new house, <laughs> just and, like um, with people. <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, the parrots and the toucans. If you have a group together, when they get sexually adult, <coughs> they will fight mm -hmm. and kill each other. Uh -huh. <coughs> and uh, if you put them with other species, when they go to eat, they'll bite their legs. Oh. The parrots, yeah. They're very terrible. jealous. Terrible. So uh, they need to be separated in pairs. Mm -hmm. And the toucans are um, uh, omnivorous. And that means they eat small birds, they eat eggs. So if you put them Bastards. in the, you know, if you put them, put them in the... Grande. <laughs> well, that's their diet, you know. Just by nature. Yeah, that's, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we cannot put them in the big, huge aviaries that are planted and beautiful because they will eat everybody inside. Oh, yes. So this yeah. little paradise, another place I was amazed, it's this garden. Uh, we guys going to show you a little bit around if uh, Jaco... Uh, Yes, of course. Invites us of course. one more time. It's a beautiful place. It's full of diversity of birds. And plants. And plants, yes. And plants and everything is blooming and birds are singing and it's a lot of fruit plates for any size, any like uh, on the floor. Yes. On some here, some here. I'm, I'm jealous with this fruit plate myself because I see yeah. like everything is fresh and everything looks good. Like it's not like you would imagine that you know things which animals are fed is like leftovers from what people don't buy or something like yeah, this no, your no. No, fruit we give plate them looks fruits and we give them uh, we have to import uh, pellets are like uh, like flakes mm -hmm. which have uh, two cans cannot have any iron in their food mm -hmm. because they're they will die so we have to import pellets uh, that are made by a company called Mazuri in the United States that uh, have uh, zero, um, zero iron mm -hmm. and uh, that's Special the protein diet. for them, okay, plus fruits. We give them uh, vitamins, uh, amino acid, minerals. We, we combine different uh, ingredients in, in different months of the year. Now these are little birds that have been given to me that you cannot put them in the big aviaries. Here they cook the food. You have parrot food here to give later. Los tucanes necesitan repello con un poquito de comida de perro. No sé, pero fíjate que suceda. Okay. He's been working with me, Aquile, 30 years. Wow. The, and that's not a drink, that's water for the hummingbirds. Oh, sweet water. <laughs> yes. Here, there's fruits that we buy, cucumber, nyame, yucca, bananas, beans, and we give all of this 
to the different parrots, watermelons, um, and all kinds of different products that we use to feed the animals. Bigger than local shop have. Yes. Some, uh, look. Peppers. Nice peppers. Yes. Better than we buy because, like, uh, looks like uh, organic. Yeah, know? they're clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's diets for diff many different birds. This amount of food for how long? One week. One week. Is that all? Yes. Here we have different incubators. It's not breeding season now, so they're empty. We have an incubator here with different eggs. Different pheasants, peacocks, only uh, no, no parrots. This is not the time of the breeding of the parrots. And there's some baby, there's some... That's a coyote calling. There's some baby parrots here, they are growing. But the parents didn't take care of them, so we, we picked them up. Coyotes. <laughs> there's more here. The parents didn't take care of these babies, so we take the ones that the parents don't, don't take care of and we, we, breed, we, we uh, hand feed them. Start to fly. There's more and more. Oh, here we have the medicines. The cameras and the computers. All of this is medicines. Preventive medicine for the birds, oxygen, microscopes, our cameras and computers so we can keep all track of all the uh, different species. Center. Yeah. Any thing that you can use? This is from the harp eagle. Whoa. <laughs> Do you have your own uh, uh, doctors for animals? Yes, we have different vets that come to visit. Mm -hmm. But we use preventive medicine. Once an animal gets sick, it gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of vitamins. We use uh, uh, different uh, uh, products. We even use uh, medicinal uh, herbs mm -hmm. in the food I of the parrots. Yeah, like yes. Some, uh, yes. The one I, I would yeah. take some yes. vitamins and. Uh, yeah. yeah, we use pollen. Uh, we use. Uh, also many um, stuff to good for the flora, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know? Like yes. probiotics. Uh, probiotics, that's the word, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I use as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you look like a bird. <laughs> you have probably a serious team to... I have a serious you. team. Uh, there's uh, 12 people working here mm -hmm. to support all the animals and mm -hmm. clean, plus uh, when we have to build something, we bring a team of people from construction, mm -hmm. not the people that take it's care of the animals. They are constantly around yes. as well, because it's building, yeah. building. And um, I feel very happy. I, for me, it's a passion. I do it as a passion, and uh, I think that uh, everybody should do something in their life, you know, uh, to, to thank, you know, our time in Earth you know, mm -hmm. in many different ways. So you do it with your uh, program, other people do it with art, other people write books, other people help people. So there's mm -hmm. always missions that you should do. And this is my mission. Your place is just such a proof of this, uh, because to me, you know, it's 
amazing beauty and it's amazing beauty and you see it's like it has such a good energy because what i see is all the wild birds and animals just come around here and this is another thing like we see these birds in front over there and they prefer to nest right here and same with ducks and same with it's like free nature around which keep coming and then there was a few days ago you post a uh, slot yes this uh, going around slot he also somehow come to enter your property and yeah he came and he was outside my kitchen door and, uh, hello what's up <laughs> you know and i had to you know i put a stick for him to climb he didn't want to get to the stick and i had to catch him i was afraid that he would get me with his claws or uh -huh. bite me he tried and I put him in a tree and um, he went happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you know, yeah. so that's what I'm talking about. It's like this place is blooming. It's also, it's always have a lot of flowers and insects and birds and, oh, look at these guys on the back. Like even yeah. these, They're drinking water <laughs> this <there>. gang <laughs> comes just here. Yeah. The story that you were asking me of the, uh, the, the egrets, bush. Yeah. Uh, the white egrets. But it's uh, two or three types of birds there. Yeah, uh, there's three types of egrets nesting there. Okay. Uh, but it's the only place you can see that small mangrove there. But yeah. in front of the island, there's a lot of mangrove where they should be nesting, mm -hmm. but they don't. What happened? Uh, a few years ago, I got a young egret, white, who mm -hmm. was sick, mm -hmm. very sick. And I couldn't save her uh, or save it. It died uh, two hours later. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's do something about it. I cut it, clean it, put cotton. I made it standing mm -hmm. and I met, ma made a nest there and I put the bird. Wow. And that created that all the birds started coming to nest there. And this now it's incredible. become a tradition yes. and it gets full of them. Yes, you yes, we see it's different seasons yeah. and sometimes it's yeah. like the small babies which are like full of this foodie yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you come uh, like a few weeks later and it's like older birds already and then you come and they disappear like yes. it's less, less, yeah. less and yes. then they disappear they have, and then uh, the next season it's again full we come by and like wow it's again so white and the dogs that you're asking me around they're called whistling dogs and they are all over Panama and um, we got 16 babies confiscated and I had a I made a pond over there and I let them grow mm -hmm. and fly and um, they go at night and they eat at night in uh, they're nocturnal mm -hmm. they eat at night in um, pastures mm -hmm. and they like to eat uh, grasses and insects and so they nest in trees, mm -hmm. in holes in trees. Okay. okay. So they leave also by January, they start disappearing mm -hmm. and hardly you see anyone. And they go Crazy. to big, very big trees and the babies jump. Oh, this is leap of faith. Is okay. the one which... They jump from very high trees, but the bottom is uh, leaves. Uh -huh. So they bounce. Mm -hmm. and they start eating by the mom and when they get older they come back and um, they eat the uh, food there mm -hmm. that i have for the tapers and they're <laughs> custom but really they they are already self-sufficient they come and go and there's more than 400 of them wow <laughs> what about your plant uh, collection i, I also... love plants i like orchids uh, since i was a young man i was born in peru mm -hmm. and um I had a good friend that he cultivated some orchids and I, I got into it. So when um, I bought this place, I started uh, buying orchids from local uh, companies. Can you find it here? Yeah, there's a there's few uh, greenhouses that mm -hmm. produce mm -hmm. local orchids mm -hmm. and hybrids and they sell them. Nice. And then I started importing myself in the past years. And I made a collection and I like uh, not only orchids, many different plants. Yes, anturiums so, as well, uh, tilantias, yes, this uh, yes, flower. Yes. 
air plants and yeah, all this yeah, yeah, impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even around here, you, you first think, oh, it's like small little pots, but the diversity is impressive. You know, yeah. where, where I see plants I've never seen before, and it's like every second plant around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we, it, you know, the, the, my collaborators, when there's flowers, they bring them to the house and we put them in the house. Mm. Like, love to see them there. Yes, yes. And I see uh, like this blooming uh, collection of orchids you pick yeah. up from the main area. Yes. Uh, they, they grow, they're happy here. Like it's yeah, a good yeah. uh, natural climate and you treat it nice. I mean, I see like... You, like to, you need to give them the right food and change mm -hmm. the pot uh, once a year because the material gets bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know... It's, I wish my work. mom knew all your, because <laughs> the, the problem is I love orchids so much and I always try to give my mom some and she's a big uh, flower enthusiast, uh, like a huge one, but with orchids somehow, and I show her a picture of your collection, she's like, what? I say, mom, you don't put it into the soil. <laughs> it's a different, I mean, it's a yeah, different it's, techniques of growing it. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're, um, um, they use the roots to hang in the tree, mm -hmm. but they don't. They uh, feed uh, from whatever falls from the leaves and the water when it rains. Mm -hmm. That gives them the nutrients. Mm -hmm. And there are some that need a lot of light. There are some that need not too much light because yes. they get burned. So you need to know who requires what. So this is one of the things you see from the road. You see that it's like some plant place yes. around. So here is like your plant nursery, right? Yes, we have a nursery for orchids. It's more than 30 years old. We have more than 3,000 different plants and um, orchids from all over the world. Also, we have different plants that I like. You have uh, plants from Madagascar, like this one that you know it's very different it has like a ball and the flowers come uh, the leaves come out yes um, it's very unusual shape this one is from asia and makes the most beautiful flower you can imagine it's about to bloom it's from asia it makes a beautiful flower grows here well in this climate i imported it and uh yeah it grows look at it it looks happy. Yes, looks young and happy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all different kinds of orchids and different plants, which we take, we don't sell them, we take them to the house oh. for decoration. And this is a very nice example. These are from different parts of Central America and South America, and they go to sleep once a year. They lose the leaves. And they look like uh, cigars. Like dull. They, they yeah. look like dead. They're, they look... Good, like, they're called catacetums. And you cannot water them until they start with a new baby. Now, this one, I will put it there and start getting water mm -hmm. in, uh, in different uh, products That's to make it flower. It because last time we were here without you, yeah. I was looking at this table and think, Oh, this is so sad. Like no. this probably uh, away because they are dead. Now you see a new leaf and it's coming with a bloom. And it's going to have a beautiful flower. Two weeks. But we take all the flowers upstairs and we enjoy them. Here, these are hot peppers that we will transplant them. Mm -hmm. Different types of hot pepper. Gardener's paradise, look at this <laughs> space, shade, and big, big collection. Nice, and the way it's growing, I mean, sometimes you see one of these, you don't expect the plants to grow like We use like coconut this. and wood, and uh, we give them, each one has a different, needs different conditions of water and humidity, so we play with that. Okay. To give them the right uh, Who are these conditions. people who are taking care of? Um, it's, it's a well, lot of work, I, I mean. I'm the one that knows about it, and I give instructions to a man that works here, and uh, okay. he's got a super green hand. Oh, yes. this is important. Yes. This is important to people. Yes. Oh, tiny one. <laughs> Yeah, there's stuff that is going to bloom soon here. Uh-oh. 
Sergey, you have chili on your way. <laughs> yeah, there's a chili. Yes. Look at the chili. Yes. Happy there, chili, huh? Yeah, we, you know, was born there and we live it there and we enjoy the chili. Oh man, it came it's, from it's the like floor. really coming from the ground. <laughs> uh, other type of plants? That's in Asia, they do a lot. We use coconuts. So each one has their own requirements and we try to comply, comply uh -huh. yeah. and give them the right habitat for them to flower beautiful. Nice. And one of these, look at this. <laughs> Happy plants, but who would yeah. know? It needs exact, exactly just... Yeah, they don't like to be in a pot. And you have here very, very nice anturiums. Anturiums I see outside your, uh, your house. Yeah, yeah. We, we move anturiums all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Let's go and see some birds. Yes. See them all the, the way back. We have three uh, aviariums, all planted with very special plants in the biggest collection of birds of different species, not in amount, but in species. In diversity. And uh, diversity, and they breed here freely. Uh -huh. What's the name of it? That's Tangara chilensis, it's from Peru. A male trodon that was born here, family of the Quetzal. And this is a male Quetzal. It's growing his tail back. I, 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 I raised him here in captivity. He's very tame with me. Look. Here you have some pheasants. It's a ginger. What? Ginger, it's called ginger. Like ginger, ginger? Ginger uh, flower. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a blue head wow. Cuban quail dove. Very rare in captivity. And there is a baby dove that just fledged out of the nest. Look oh at it. My. So cute. All the birds breed fantastic in these uh, planted aviaries. To me, it looks perfect. This plant I brought from the Amazon 20 years ago. It's grown very big now. Wow. It's a philodendron. It's like monsteras. A family of monstera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Monsteras have holes in the leaves. Yes, yes. These ones don't. This yellow one, is it different? It's the same species, but that's a mutation, a yellow mutation called yellow gigi. Uh -huh. Oh, look at those. Wow. Uh, we have over 450 species. Wow! 450 species! And we bred, for the first time in captivity, 11 species worldwide here, of Some different here? birds. Some yes. right here in this? Yes, in these areas and in different uh, aviaries. Uh -huh. <gasps> Look at this stuff! Wow, the red, uh, like a wounded. Yeah, it's called... Uh, Heart bleeding dove from Asia. It's just so many of them. You have a hummingbird right there. Oh, yes, so rare too. Wow. There's a baby of an Asian fruit dove. It's a green with a red head fruit dove. 
That's a baby. Albino toucan in the world. It's over there. That's a normal color. That's the albino. Uh-huh. Only one in the world? Yeah, the so only rare. one. Yes. But is his health is good? Like? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah? Oi. Hello. Wow. It's a female trogon, born here. Oh, we bred many of them for the first time in captivity worldwide. I like them very much. And we have probably one of the largest collection of toucans in the world. And they see most of them are in couples here. Yes, yes they breed. They're breeding pairs. Yeah. Perfect. Do they make a lot of noise? No? Not really. It's just but a... they are in separate uh, aviaries because they are carnivorous and they will eat other birds and their eggs. Oh. You cannot have them free here. So they watch all these oh, yeah. things they're happening checking every, They're checking everything and seeing, hey, I want to be one there. Day, one, one day, one day I'm going to open this cage. It's like a, in a turkey, all inclusive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eat all you can. <laughs> That's not very common. Like Brazilian flag. What's the name of it? Chlorophonia cyanea. This one I raised by hand, knows me. So he comes to say hello to me. We bred this species for the first time in captivity in 1998. It's from Peru Curly and it's called hair. Curly Crested Tucanet. Hola bonita, hola bonita, hola bonita hermosa, hola, hola. Let me see if she comes to say hello to me. Okay. <laughs> big, big, big. Oh. <laughs> This doesn't happen with normal birds, never. Wait. I've never seen curly feathers. Yeah. It's here, yes? Yeah? Girl. I raise mm. it. It's my baby. Oh. Now the second one is jealous. Look. Like where did But did you get for her the mail? Necesitan repello, Kile, los tucanes. Ven. Ya, ya lo Go. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> I'm very happy. They are happy, look, it's couple. Yeah, and, and they he... breed. They breed here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's called an umbrella bird. He's molting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the first time breeding captivity worldwide. He attacks me. It's male, yeah? Yes. But he's since molting. Let me see if he talks to me back. Wah, wah, wah. That's the Cuban trogon, the national bird of Cuba. <gasps> Crown pigeon from the Philippines. We breed them very well here. Wow, big one. Big. Yes, there's another one there. What's a lovely color. And they make a noise like a, like a tambor. Who is it? Crested Australian dove. Wow, this is such a beautiful bird over there. The closest relative to the extinct dodo bird. <gasps> it's a male chasing a female. 
They have beautiful feathers. I see. Yeah. It's incredible their color. And she is following him. Look, 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 look. Wants to breed. She's not ready, so she goes. And I'm gonna check to see if the cock of the rocks have eggs here in the cave. That's a cock of the rock from Ecuador. Cocoa. That's a male. And they nest in these caves over there. And I'm gonna check if there's an egg in the nest. Watch it, it's coming out. Yeah. Wow. And look what I found here. A land crab. They bite very hard. You need to know how to catch them. Catch the crab knowledge. Yeah, if survival not, knowledge. They will bite you very hard. Is it not dangerous for a bird? No. He's not letting go, man. This is a male. It could be a finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, my friend. Be free. Get out of the nest. Yes. <laughs> wow. Turaco, uh, African turaco. And you have a fruit dove taking sun over there. Oh, mini dove called Azuero dove from Panama. And we'll let it go. So the micro dove. Get close. And this is the Panamanian blue nozzle. Um, in, in English, you say it's a uh, pavón. Uh, it's a crasset. I don't know, that's in the name. Crasset. Not very common. Very close. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. What's this white one? That's uh, imperial white fruit dog from Asia. Oh, 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 oh! She's bullying me. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, oh. <gasps> hey, where is it gonna go? They're very competitive. Okay. And you have a male quetzal there. Uh, Without I, the tail, I yeah. Yes, I also see a lot of books uh, about birds and orchids, like a super yeah. impressive collection. Of, I like to read. Yes, yes. Uh, I have a big book collection that has to do with birds, mammals, uh, all kinds of species. It's a very old collection uh, that it took me years to, to, to make. It's very complete. It talks about orchids, it talks about bats, uh, many things about very specific bird species. And these are the old first birds of Books of Panama. And I've been lucky enough, I've been, uh, have the visit of Mr. Wrigley, which made Birds of Panama. And um, he dedicated this book to me in 2010 which I keep as a jewel. He's a superman. Mm. Yes. 
I am in uh, different groups uh, of uh, aviculture. Mm -hmm. In uh, you know, I am in a group in um, that is worldwide. Uh, another group that uh, is from Australia. Another group that is from Saudi Arabia. Another group that is from Pakistan. And uh, I belong to different groups. Mm -hmm. There is another group from Cuba. So we passed information between all the people that breed species. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, I get uh, called to give uh, conferences in different parts of the world mm -hmm. about the work I do. This and, um, is very important. And, uh, yeah, I, but COVID stopped that. My last conference was in Galicia, Spain. I was the only foreigner, and um, people there don't speak a lot of English, so they, since I'm Spanish speaking and they knew about this place, mm -hmm. they gave me an invitation to give a speech in, in front of uh, almost 400 people mm -hmm. from different parts. And all the uh, ornithologists, bird yes, enthusiasts. Yes, and yes. Uh, and uh, I get uh, published in different magazines. I'll show you some later. One from Germany, mm -hmm. another one from the Czech Republic. So uh, there is uh, this Australia. specific communication yes. between yes. people who really want to get this knowledge, want to get this yes. experience and, uh, yeah, and uh, work in the same fields of... Uh, yes. And we work with uh, SUS and transfer information. And uh, if there is... Uh, you know, some genetics that a zoo needs, I'm happy to help mm -hmm. them with the approval of the Panamanian government. Okay, yes. Th this is good. And yeah. uh, does the government support anyhow? Like uh, they support us legally, uh, economically, they don't have the, the tools to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do also is we rent some uh, rooms and it uh, brings us some uh, money to help the expenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the breeding produces a little bit of uh, help also. And this place is open to the public by appointment. Mm -hmm. so, Th that's what it is. Yes, by appointment. Okay. Uh, we have visitors coming. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's open from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning when mm -hmm. all the animals are fed and everything is clean. Mm -hmm. What is the best time of the day to see? In the morning, I would say, is the best time because the light is better. In, mm -hmm. uh, and it's close at 4.30, mm -hmm. where the people start picking up the food. And, mm. uh, and we recirculate everything. Nothing of the food is thrown, because we have uh, a, whatever is left from the birds, tapers, and uh, the wild pigs. And and, lots uh, of precious guano, you know this? <laughs> no, 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 they eat it. Uh, we have oh. turtles that eat it also. Oh, OK. So everything is... Uh, we um, recirculate, mm -hmm. that's the word? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. recycle. And, uh, you know, it's been a happy story so far. You know, for it's us, it's a priority that uh, the birds and the animals are uh, treated uh, the right way. You know, you have to, they have to have distractions. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, we, put the food in different places or inside a piece of coconut so they have to break it and mm -hmm. open it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yes, so every day we have different things. We put branches, new branches with mm -hmm. leaves and uh, try to give them um, different types of motivations. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because you give them a good quality life and uh, it's not only having them and having them well, you need mm -hmm. to give them a good quality life. Yes. Jaco, can you tell us please, what are these uh, maps over there? It's like yes, that's a collection of maps from the 1500s, 1600s, uh, Spanish, Dutch and French, and uh, they describe Central and South America, how, how they saw it I see, at those it's different days. shape. And it's completely different shape. Especially this. Yeah, yeah. This and, one is. Um, it's a very important collection. Uh, I was lucky to get it in 1990s uh -huh. in an auction in Peru. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, that is a very important stamp. 
Which one? The, Over there. This Panama? This is one stamp of 80 that was made worldwide uh, when they were deciding the U.S. Congress to build the Canal of Panama, they were thinking about Nicaragua. And um, they came out with that stamp of the volcano and the Congress changed the idea and decided to build the canal in Panama. Uh -huh. And that's one of the 80 stamps with the whole story. Okay. Yes. It was a present to me from a very good friend. Nice. nice. That's cool. And here? Here we have uh, the signature, one of the first presidents of Panama, where he made it the medals to congratulate the people. Uh -huh. So that's the original document. It was also a gift from a friend. And that one is a very sad document, an original that a friend of mine that collected documents, mm -hmm. he already died from cancer, he gave it to me as a gift. It's the sale of a slave in Peru in the 1700s. And okay. it's an original. And uh, I'm against racism, against uh, any kind of uh, that type of modality in mm -hmm. race, sex, or religion. Mm -hmm. But it's an important document. It was given to me and I put it there to show the tragedy of those times, mm -hmm. which was a tragedy. Of course, and uh, here in Panama was a big port for this. Yeah, Panama, all the Caribbean. And all this started when, I understand, when the English discovered the sugar cane and they started making rum. Mm -hmm. Since they have all the colonies in Africa, they decided to bring slaves to the Caribbean. So they used to come with the trade winds. You people that are sailors yeah. know the name of the trade wind. Passat. Okay, and trade was a trade of slaves because they were not bringing food, they were bringing slaves to this area. So, uh, in my opinion, that name should be changed not to trade to another name because it brings me bad memories, if I can be honest mm -hmm. about it. And many people don't know about it. We even sailors, we didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah. I like history, I like to read, and uh, you know. I am not uh, a person that will attack any government or anything of the past, but I'm just telling you about story. The frogs you're going to see are called uh, Ophaga pumilio, are the red ones. There's many kinds of different color morphs, that means different patterns of colors, and they come from uh, Bocas del Toro, and each island has a different color morph. We have them all. We have three species. Ophaga pumilio, Ophaga vicente, which are very rare, and Dendrobates pumilio. They put their eggs in bromeliads, and you see a froglet starting to grow, and the mother goes every day and puts in the bromelia unfertile eggs which they eat till they grow. Then they lose their tail, they come out of the bromelia, go to the ground and start eating insects. The food there, since it's an open terrarium, you have ants, you have many many other insects that are very small that the babies can eat and we also give them once a day termites and they eat them. So we have a pure friendly ecosystem where they all grow and uh, this is the biggest terrarium in the world. I like to go and see the wildlife and how they live and what they do and uh, that also gives me um, good ideas how to uh, engage with the wildlife, the local wildlife we have. But you have here quite a lot. I met uh, like a couple of weeks ago just on the road, the armadillo. Yeah. Uh, and it's like was a young, I don't know, male or female, not scared of uh, people and also like around four to five different breeds of monkeys. Yes, around. yeah, you can see in this mountain in front, mm -hmm. we've released uh, 15 deer 
three years ago. Mm -hmm. We spoke with the people from the town mm -hmm. to tell them not to hunt them. We release monkeys here. Uh, we release uh, hundreds of parakeets. The green parakeets. Yes, it's thousands uh, I think, of them. Are. I think the biggest population is in Panama. It's in this area because through the years we've released more than 500 of them. We call them green bullets <laughs> because <laughs> they fly. It's so many of them. It's like yeah. they fly yeah. in groups of I don't know 40, 50, yes. and uh, they end up in uh, Isla Grande for the night stay uh, and in the some properties on the way yeah. and when we come for drone flights it's incredible they're everywhere they make yes, so it's much it's amazing time. yeah okay those are masks that uh, it's it's done in the near town puerto lindo the official name is garrote and uh, they make them they're called uh, devil's masks and, um, but they're not negative devils. They do it for carnival um, Wednesday of Ash. And they come dancing with special costumes and the mask. And these devils are to get away the bad energies and mm -hmm. the bad things. So they have to look like a mean devil, mm -hmm. but it's done with with a good intention. With a good intention. Mm -hmm. So it's local art, and I had them as a gift by a friend. Welcome. These are our accommodations in uh, So the Lismo Conservation Center in Natural Villa. I want to welcome everybody that would like to come here and see paradise. We have some goats that escaped. It went to the roof. We have uh, seven guest rooms that are really comfortable, very nice with air conditioning. Uh, Netflix, Amazon, good Wi-Fi, and excellent food. We have a super chef that works with us for 23 years. Let me show you the place. Here's a dining table, a kitchenette for the people that want to stay and at night they get hungry. This is one of the rooms. with a very comfortable bedroom, TV, and bathroom. Yeah. There's everything here, whatever you need. <laughs> and you have a TV here where people can sit and watch. And there's amazing old pictures from my young days of spear fishing that you can see. Big fish that we still catch in the area. And they're great and fresh for eating. Another full room. Here you have six beds made out of local wood, very rare local wood. And I would like to show you our kitchen that can receive more than 50 people. Here we have a barbecue 
to roast some, uh, cook some good meat or fish. We also have another guest that I want to introduce to you. Her name is Nina, and she's taking a nap. Hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. Hello. You're sleepy, okay. Here we are in the kitchen, and there is an important, very important, special piece of art that was given to me by a spectacular woman, Dina. And I thank you for that. Everybody, the first thing they look is at this. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we have all the things to do, coffees, teas, a, a special professional uh, kitchen with all kinds of things. Come and visit. <laughs> Who's thirsty, we have some beer. <laughs> Another one here. With many delicious things to try. All the instruments. A very nice wine place to have good fresh wine for the people that like it. And, you know, we always want to have our clothes clean. Come, I invite you. This is the laundry room. And this is the boss. She's our cook, Isabel. And she's been 23 years with us. And here, we have another place to put some vegetables, things, big stuff to make uh, food for many people, even paella. And downstairs we have two more rooms and a gym. But there's two rooms more and a very nice gym. Welcome to Panama. My Instagram and um, the contact of the person for visits or to stay here and rent uh, will be in the in, in the, the below in the below of the of the publication uh, God willing. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Jaco. Thank you so much. It's for been a pleasure this to place have you guys over. Because what you do, I think, and, is the best. Really. And uh, I congratulate you guys for the work you're doing. Thank you guys for staying with us all this time, uh, all this episode. There is few more to come about other businesses around here. I hope you like. Me, I promise to make uh, homework and uh, work out better as an interviewer because it's so many interesting things to tell. And see you next time. Please subscribe, comment, and subscribe to Jaco's page. Uh, it's very important to share this outstanding knowledge and just to have a constant reminder of how diverse and beauty is around. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.